way around it. You are starting off, if you're two-faced, with probably the hardest team to play against, the favorites, the top team in the power rankings. This has got to be terrifying for them. But I'm hoping that they can settle into Oregon. They can enter with maybe some confidence with some of the aggression we know this team can have. And if they come out strong and send a message early, this could be quite an exciting stage for them. I, I cannot wait to get this one underway because if this first matchup is any indication of the stage to come, we're in for an exciting one. Yeah, and of course, with the bands rolling in, their default Thatcher and Flores, Thatcher is banned universally everywhere. Flores makes that shield play uh, a little bit more powerful. You're really forced to bring those uh, those throwables. And as such, normally a Flores ban is followed by a Wamai. They kind of go hand in hand like a Nomad and a Valkyrie. We'll have to see if Two-Faced end up taking that out. And it, it was, okay, yeah, there we go. It is going to be the Wamai. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. And of course, you know, the Mira, just like Thatcher, banned pretty much everywhere. Yeah, pretty standard stuff overall in terms of the ban phase and what we've come to see in Oregon in, you know, the recent weeks. But I'm curious to see the more unexpected stuff today, right? Maybe we'll see some Parabellum innovation like usual, but there's one element this stage that we haven't seen in any others. And that is, of course, the introduction of Thunderbird, the new operator bringing her Kona stations into the mix. I don't know how much we're going to see it on Oregon. But if you think about the basement site, which it doesn't look like we'll be seeing right off the bat, looks like we'll be heading up to the dorm site instead, all of the power positions and the deployable shields and those strong positions that defensive teams need to lock down, I wonder if those Kona stations can amplify the power that those positions can really bring to a defensive team. Of course, we're not going to see that here in round number one. Not only are we headed upstairs, but we're not going to see a Thunderbird right now. Two-Faced starting off the defense with, for the most part, a pretty standard lineup. Bringing out the Goyo, those Vulcan shields, bringing out the Yoruni to add those laser gates to the mix to compound with the area or the projectile denial that Silent has on that Jaeger. Yeah, I like a theory crafting with the Thunderbird. I definitely think, especially on a site like, you know, if we want to take Dorms as an example, she can make Bolo more powerful, uh, Pit, an Attic, even maybe Bunk by Big Window. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if we're going to see the Thunderbird from Two-Faced. Uh, we might, because she does, you know, allow you to play a little bit more aggressively. You know, if you're a Roamer, let's say you can play aggressively, uh, take some damage finding a kill, then fall back to sight, and there you go, that punishment is gone. But Silent playing very aggressively, speaking of which, he's going to try and take an early peek against someone rappelling up to Master, but he's not going to be able to find his mark. And you can see the defenders, although they have a lot stacked up over towards Trophy, they're not playing it aggressively. There's no shield facing that way, at least not far forward, but Butters is down below with what sounds like a pre-placed and Melted is wise to it. He's not going to repel right in. He's not going to fall victim to that C4. And Butters' explosive might just go to waste. Well, Butters, for now, himself forced downstairs to rotate away as a kind of cut-off clear is coming in from Parabellum. They haven't taken the time to fully enter through the basement and clear out anyone sitting below. But they are trying to establish that angle through main lobby to lock off that point of rotation up the main staircase. So they're going to now turn their attention to the site itself. We'll see a couple of nades coming in from Spirits in Kix's direction. And actually, it's Kool-Aid with a nade to open things up and find the first kill of Stage 3 here. That's going to be found on to Eddie, who will be put into the grave for the remainder of round number one. And that's going to encourage Butters to get a bit aggressive. Successful on that first peak as he takes down Eska, but Kool-Aid is quick behind to find a double kill and get that trade. And this is good utility play from Parabellum as well, knocking out all the ADSs, the Arunigate, and the Goyo shield in the kids' door. There's a couple more shields, one in kids, one in attic. That's not really where Parabellum are pushing. They're completely ignoring attic. They're just pushing up white, but the attackers will start to fall. We're back down to a two versus two. Both your east side players are now dead. It is even man count, but Kool-Aid and Spirits are going to have to split up. Spirits coming from the trophy side. Kool-Aid still holding down the cross on white, though he is playing passive, and he's being stopped by this smoke, but no, the last one will be shot. Kool-Aid no longer delayed. The attackers have a decent bit of time. 40 seconds left. More drones coming out from Spirits as well, and he's got the Iana clone he can work off of. Both these defenders, looks like they know exactly where the diffuser is, but Silent on the prone peak, he'll get his head shot off, and it's just Surf. 
One versus two. Case now recovered by Spirits. It'll likely be up to Kool-Aid to try and cover this plant, but they've got pings. They know exactly where Surf is. Kool-Aid will hold the angle, but lose the fight. And Spirits is just going to stick. He knows he's got no time, but the sprint from Surf. Get him off the plant. 15 seconds, but Surf is so low, but still wins out with the shotgun. One pump into Spirits. Two-Faced able to still recover round number one. And the opening round from Two-Faced, I just, I can imagine the hype they're feeling right now. That is certainly the way to open up the first matchup of this stage against a team like Parabellum. And you take a round. I think Surf found, what, a triple kill? Multiple shotgun kills, just holding down the middle of that top floor all by himself. Yeah, there it is. That triple, that is a statement and a half to make in this opening round. Now, Parabellum on their attack looked surprisingly disjointed to get things started. We saw a couple of different attacking efforts, kind of an initial push around the midpoint in the round that only found three attackers pushing in at the same time. Now, it looked like it was initially going well, but like I said, Surf just stood up, pulled out that shotgun, and held Dorms with his life. And then Parabellum, they kind of got stuck in their tracks a little bit. Two players, Spirits and Kool-Aid, they were the last alive, but also because they weren't as involved in that initial push as I was expecting. It was kind of two separate narratives going on in that Parabellum attack, and it seemed that while the initial effort was strong, it wasn't quite strong enough to overpower Surf, just holding things down. And Spirits and Kool-Aid, although they gave it quite an effort in the end, they weren't able to get past him either. I also got something I noticed, Jonah, is, you know, something that we praise Parabellum for mm -hmm. a lot is their drone structure. They have incredible drone structure, they're a very info-based team because they're so strat-heavy, because they rely so much on the IGLing of Penguin. But before the clear was even finished, PB had lost half of their drones. And I wonder if that has something to do with the disjointedness of their execute. Maybe they just didn't have enough info to work off of because of that early loss of intel. So hopefully... For Parabellum's sake, it doesn't happen again as more drones come in, but they don't drone far enough before Eska makes his entry into T3. Eddie lands a beautiful shot onto that player, and not only is that an opening pick, but that means Butters is also not seen yet. If he can stay tucked in the rear stage with Eddie shooting his drones, it could be another freebie for Two-Faced. Yeah, interesting here how we had the one-for-one -one switch with Butters and Eddie on to their respective operators. It was Butters before holding down that Goyo roll, but now switching off to the Aruni, and he looks like he wants to get aggressive here. He's tucked carefully here in T1, and he's not going to be able to find much because the rest of these attackers are busy pushing down the stairs, but they are simply not aware of his position. That's an easy kill for Butters. Penguin, hoping to retaliate, will go for the vault and will get punished for it. A bit of a blunder there from Penguin, a bit of a surprising one at that, leaving Parabellum in an uncomfortable 2v4. All of this action happening within the first 90 seconds of the round, and Two-Faced coming out on top thanks to some aggressive playstyle. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but PB, I told you so. They did not drone it. Butters got the freest pick of his life, and I guess we still see Penguin in, in entry mode, I guess, though even when he was on hard support at invite, he had the most entry, uh, opening engagements on his team. Tried to get that aggressive refrag, ends up not working out, and puts his team in a 4v3. They will track down Silent, so luckily for them, the Jaeger won't get away, but they're still at a one-man disadvantage. They've got a minute left to play with, which, you know, isn't a terribly close to the end of the timer but as surf locks off elbow they don't have a hard breach they will not be able to establish that cross he'll pivot the shield as well just in case pb try going for a front push and the diffuser is also tucked in harry potter but as butters tries to reposition melted cuts him down from bunker and once again the attackers while split up are trying to make a coordinated effort to find kicks and surf the two support players long angle being played by surf ends up not working out for him a couple missed shots will end his most of his hp down to just one bullet's worth case i believe uh, has not been recovered yet actually by either of these attackers that was a little bit odd from spirits i guess missing that gone six shot and missing the shots out of the cade as well kicks finishes him off and melted just blindly rushing in would be the second kicks with a 2k to end the round and two faced with their second in a row yeah, that's another strong defensive performance we talked about the analyst desk they brought up 
the importance of Two-Face throwing things at Parabellum that maybe they're not as comfortable with. And that wasn't super out of the ordinary, but it certainly wasn't your most, most orthodox basement hold. There was an aggressive extension from both that was Eddie and Butters who were playing the Goyo, the Aruni. They were holding down that tower side and they were just they were just taking fights. They were eager to stop Parabellum before they could even get into the building. And well, that seemed to work out for the most part. It was another story of Parabellum coming back in that round in that 2v4 situation and bringing it back to a very doable 2v2, but just failing to overpower those final two defenders. But Harrison, I want to go back to something you highlighted in the middle of that round, and that's the role changes that Parabellum have changed up a bit. And of course, we knew a little bit about what they were expecting to change. Of course, all the talk during uh, the off season, you could say. But now we're actually seeing it in action. Penguin, who's generally been on that, you know, second entry flex role, has now been relegated to the hard support, as we can see. Playing Habana now, three rounds in a row. And Melted, someone who's been more comfortable and generally plays those fragging roles, is now on what we could see as that first second entry position. So it'll be interesting to see how this dynamic changes for Parabellum, not only in this map we have in front of us here, because something certainly does have to change, but in the stage overall and how they really fit into these new roles. Yeah. Especially towards that last round, too. Um... Missing the Gon 6 shot on that bulletproof cam, giving all the info for kicks to swing off of. And Spirits missing some key shots, ended up losing them the round. Because I, th I guarantee Spirits gets that cam, you know, kicks doesn't have as much info, maybe he plays a little bit more aggressively on the shield, or if, you know, if Spirits just hits one more shot, you're left with a 1 HP surf. But I digress. Urbellum, it's odd to say that they have not found any attacking success, because, I mean, they're a pretty damn good attacking team. And I know talking to Keegan, talking to Penguin, he was very excited to show us their new attacking structure. Sadly, so far, it has not worked out. Now, this is meeting. It is the tertiary site. It's typically the site you are, quote-unquote, supposed to win. It's the, quote-unquote, weaker site. So hopefully Parabellum, you know, for their fans and for their sake, we'll see if they're able to find any success here. First things first, though, they got to clear the top floor. And if I'm reading the silhouettes correctly, there's only two people, one in Kids and one or Kids Attic. That's Kicks, And the Valkyrie of Eddie tucked in behind Bunk. Nade will go from below, barely deal any damage. That's just tip damage that uh, Eddie probably doesn't really have to worry about. But as the stuns come in, Melted's not going to push off of it just yet, but Eddie peeks. That's hmm. an odd decision from the Valkyrie. Eska follows up with another, and it's a two-man advantage for the attack. Yeah, this is a much better way for Parabellum to start. They're now finally in the upper hand position for the first time this map so far. And now Two-Faced are going to be forced to make some sort of comeback. Kix has now been spotted out in Attic, and this is Parabellum's next mission without a doubt. They're going to send a couple more drones his way, but right now it doesn't seem to matter because Kix is being isolated, and the rest of Two-Face is being picked off one by one. Another player is going to fall, and now Kix is going to be forced to drop down and return to the site to hope he can support Surf, but unfortunately... That's not going to be allowed to happen. Kicks now, the last player standing as Surf is finished off with a nade, and he'll be scrambling around in meeting, hoping to get something going, but Kool-Aid, with that shot onto Kicks, finishes him off, and Parabellum, after losing two in a row, they come out with a flawless round in response. Much better info game from Parabellum, too. You could tell they, after the past two rounds, they were thorough, locking down those top two floor members. I do have to say, I think Eddie got a little bit aggressive on the big window. He did not need to peek. Uh, maybe he was just afraid of the nade from below, so he wanted to kind of reposition, you know, gain some kind of vantage point, maybe uh, catch Melted off guard, but it was not meant to be. And PB played the vertical very well, able to kill one of those site players. I think it was, um, I think it was Silent. Uh, playing the vert on security, forcing kicks out of the site as well, uh, and he wasn't able to do anything in the end. Arabellum were just, I mean, all in all, very thorough, which is, and very controlled, which is not something that we've seen in the past couple rounds. So, I mean, if you're going to take any round to try and start a streak of your own after losing the first two, that's the perfect round to do it, especially ending it flawlessly. You're yeah, trying to reestablish that momentum, get some of that confidence back that you spoke Penguin was so excited about, and we'll see how they adapt their top four attack. Last time I mentioned it seemed a little bit disjointed and they struggled to get a cohesive push which is a bit surprising to say for Parabellum. And I guess credit to that 
can be given to Two-Face for applying a lot of early pressure. Something that's silent, we can see here as he prones up towards this master door, is eager to do again. Not necessarily go for any crazy wide swings, Ooh. but this time it will work. A quick bullet to puncture that barricade and then a headshot onto Penguin. And that is a tremendous early frag for this Two-Face defense. You've now taken off your main primary hard breacher, the one you're really relying on to get that master wall open, and now Kool-Aid, the Maverick, you're going to have to entirely rely on that utility. If Parabellum wanted to go for that two-pronged extension, taking master and taking attic, that's probably going to have to be thrown out the window now, and they're going to have to adapt on the fly here. Yeah, that, uh, we've seen Silent try that before, too, and again, a lack of drone work. Eddie just sitting in Shower Hall, capitalizes on Eska, falsely assuming that it's clear. So now you've lost two bodies for Parabellum, and Eddie and Butters are still roaming free on the other side of the map to make sure that you can't push there. You are going to have to completely come from the east side. Kool-Aid is going to start attempting to Mav open this wall. Luckily for him, Spirits is there on white to kill Kicks and make his job a little bit safer, but Spirits has a lot to worry about. Not only does he have to worry about Butters and Z, there's also Eddie tucked in the small tower who will likely come for a flank at some point. He's being very tentative about it because there's likely some sort of flank drone set up, but he'll probably end up attempting it eventually, unless Spirits decides to just barrel on in. Look at an easy pick on a Surf. There's the evening of the man count that Parabellum were looking for. Now in the minute 15, I mean, sure, they don't have a lot of hard breach to work on, and now Spirits is cut down, but a 2 versus 3 is a much better situation than a 3v5. I like this strategy from Parabellum. They realized how many players were off-site, and they said, you know what, let's get on the doorstep of this objective, and let's start pressuring them out. They may have waited a little bit too long for that strategy to bear as much fruit as I initially expected, because now Two-Face has been allowed to rotate back, and Butters is going to light up Kool-Aid and shut him down. Silent on the swing will actually light melt it up, but Butters, with the pistol in hand, will be credited with that fatal blow. An excellent attempt there from Parabellum, trying to change up that attacking strategy on the fly, but unfortunately, maybe a little bit of indecision lost them that round. I really did like that attempt. It looked like Spirits was going to pressure that site with the entire team, and they would have just sent it onto the objective, knowing that there were two, two members of the defense downstairs and roaming still, but unfortunately waiting a little bit too long to actually get that done, and opening the door for Two-Face to get back to the objective and hold it down until the end of the round. I also saw the ping on the Aruni, um, or wherever that yellow ping was. I think it was on the wrong side of the doorway, calling out for spirits. I mean, it didn't matter eventually because he just got pinched by those two players. And again, we see Parabellum with a lack of drone work, you know? This is something we saw in the first two rounds that I thought was going to be amended for meeting. Parabellum, your drone work. Be thorough, man. You know Two-Faced. They're playing extremely aggressive to specifically counter how you play. Because, I mean, Penguin is not the only creative IGL, right? Two-Faced, the core, Eddie, Kix, and Silent, have been at the top of T3 for a while, playing against IGLs like uh, like Gunner, like JJ Blastful, like Poison, even, even Mr. B, right? And those guys can be pretty creative, and I'm sure they've figured out by now that when you're playing a super-structured team that relies heavily on strats, heavily on info, heavily on counterplay, that if you just play like rats, and you play super aggro, and do not let them get comfortable, sometimes they fall apart. And that's what we're seeing from Parabellum right now. I love that you mentioned rat roam, because that's exactly what I just wrote right, down in my just, notes. That dude was just sitting in showers! Exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> that is just the small thing that you know, you generally don't see at this level because most time you're going to be punished for that kind of strategy. A solo play, essentially the highest risk kind of play you can go with as a defensive team. Sit yourself in a corner and hope they don't drone you out. And at this level, that rarely ever works. But in the case of Parabellum, you mentioned the drone work has been a problem and Two-Faced has exploited that very successfully thus far. Now, Silent, he will be spotted out by a drone. So an immediate correction has been made and Silent after seeing that drone, will rotate away and play a little bit safer. Looks like Butters has rotated back to the site as well, no longer holding that position in T3 or anywhere in tower, in fact, allowing now Parabellum to finally make up some ground in this map 
and take this control. But we can see by the pace here and the amount of time on the clock, the Parabella are wary now. They're taking their time a little bit more and making some adjustments as to how they take this map and as patient as they need to be to clear out all these corners. Yeah, and the, luckily for them, the Goyo and the Aruni also fell back from tower as well because Esco was able to make his way in a T3. And something we haven't touched on, Jonah, just yet uh, is the Blitz. This is something we see a lot from PB. When they take in a basement, if they want elbow, they're going to take elbow. They're going to do it with that blitz. There's not a lot that's going to be able to stop Spirits, who has been in spawn on those flank cams the entire round so far. He's going to set up with Melted for this push, but they've got to worry about this guy Barrels, and they've got to worry about the guy Harry Potter. Those are the people holding the cross, preventing this blitz push in, because as soon as the blitz tries to turn that corner and run into Elbow, there's going to be a gun on one of those doorways or on those head holes that's ready to meet him. Now, Surf only has one gas canister left, and there is 40 seconds. There's only... So he, he doesn't have enough time to lay by himself, but luckily enough, you know, there's two C4s to back it up, but here's a sprint in from Penguin just down the hatch, kills the man Harry Potter, Spirits blinds, the Goyo and Elbow takes that control, it's another one for Penguin and Pillar, and things are falling apart for this defense. A C4 goes out in desperation, but it does not <laughs> land, the Blitz gets two, and PB take round five, they take firm control. That's one of those strategies and executes that honestly, when they work, it, it just makes you smile because you love to see the in the absolute intensity of Parabellum. And clearly, what they were trying to do was that 3-2-1 execute count. Oh, yeah. We saw it, and in the moment the full sprint from the Blitz came into Elbow, you knew it was all about to go down. And man, it really did. At the same time they're pushing Elbow, they're applying as much pressure into Pillars as possible to do exactly like you said, Harrison, prevent a crossfire from being found and the Blitz being shot in the back, because that is your number one priority when you're running that kind of strategy. I mean, and then just beautiful play all around from the entire team, collapsing all over that site, allowing that Blitz to push through Elbow and take control of Closet, getting that final kill. It really was a textbook execute when it came down to the actual push. Now, Two-Faced, as a defense, in that entire round, I loved their progression as well and how they didn't allow Parabellum to get the early picks that they were desperately hunting for. I mean, you mentioned how, you know, they were sitting in spawn on flank cams for, you know, two and a half minutes of the round because they were they were so suspicious that somebody was going to come up on that flank. But Two-Faced, they were aware that Parabellum were probably making some adjustments, knowing the strategy as a defense. They've brought round after round now. They adjusted, and not a single player died to a flank cam. Not a single player died because they were over-aggressive. They simply got outsmarted on the site itself. Yeah, that was a beautiful execute. And again, thorough droning. Parabellum, you know, I guess with the exception of, uh, of round four, was it... They've started to learn from their mistakes, but it's not going to help. Despite finding Silent, we'll get the opening pick on his spirits. Now, luckily for Parabellum, it's not unanswered. Silent does go down, but, you know, at what cost? You lose your Iana, you lose Nades, you lose one of your primary sources of clearing those Aruni gates. You lose a lot of info. And spirits is 7-4. and four. He's your top frag. So if you're going to go one for one with anyone on this squad right now, I think Silent chose the best target. At least it's not Penguin. I mean, we've seen him on the receiving end of these opening picks a couple times from this aggressive play. So you have you have your hard breachers still in the mix. But unfortunately for Parabellum, they still have one more rat roamer to worry about, and that is Butters sitting over in tower, as we just saw a moment ago. Right now, Parabellum, they're just working their way through the rest of this building, taking their way from small tower after getting that refrag onto Silent and working their way towards the north. Now, Penguin sending his drone here, and we'll see how thorough he is. Looks like he was thorough enough. Butters trying to rotate back in time, but not checking the angle, and got a little bit complacent himself. So we're seeing this complacency kind of go both ways on these teams. Butters the next victim to it, however, and that gives Parabellum a one-man advantage going into the last minute 15. That's a little bit of the, the weakness of a kind of ratty style of play, right? Because the goal of the ratty style of play is to get free picks, and once the attackers wise up to it, you try to make them slow down, right? That's the goal of the ratty play. But in slowing them down, if you're continuing to play the ratty play, it's going to take longer 
for you to get those freebies because they've slowed down. And that means once you get spotted, if you get spotted, it's very likely that the attackers, by that point in time, already have enough controller salvage to get a cutoff, which is exactly what we just saw there. Kool-Aid and Eska take a lot of heat thanks to a C4 from Eddie as Eddie continues to hold on to Freezer. He'll get full whited by the Flashbang, but Kool-Aid has been taken down. Penguin also severely lit up. He tries to get into the default plant spot. They know exactly where he is, but Surf is still going to get his head cut off. But Eddie, he tacks on for two. Penguin goes down. It's a 1v1. It's melted on very low HP up against Eddie. They both know where each other are. They have full info, but the case has been dropped. And Eddie can watch it. Melted is only one bullet's worth of HP, so the pea shooter effect of this MPX is nullified. Here comes the peak, though. Both pre firing over. Eddie's gonna start taking the passive angle because he knows he can play the time. This is smart from the Valkyrie. And Melted, he's forced to plant. Three seconds left on it. Is Eddie gonna be able to get there in time? It goes down. Here's the come up. There we go, Eddie. The triple kill. Nearly. The save from Melted, but unfortunately, the slow ADS time really doing him in. And Two Face take that 4 2 half. Wow, that was a surprising turn of events in that execute. I mean, just after we were praising Parabellum's push in from that elbow side, looks like they had a couple of mishaps and just couldn't find the trades as well as Two-Face just did. With an excellent hold on that basement site, Two-Face now complete their defensive half with a 4-2 to two split. That's a great way to start this map, but they still have a long way to go. I know Parabellum, they really wanted that third attacking round. Had they taken it, I suspect they would have entered their defensive half with a lot of confidence and maybe the edge. But now I think we're at relatively equal footing right now, and Parabellum, they really still have a lot of ground to make up. I mean, this is two rounds, two full rounds against a team who clearly has your number so far. But of course, heading on to this defensive side, now we'll get to see how Two-Faced can attack, and this is where we get to see if any weaknesses emerge on the other side of the coin. Yeah, because while Parabellum are very proud of their attacks, many people consider the defense to be a little bit easier. You can't be, you know, at the playstyle that Two-Faced have shown, you can be aggressive on the attack, but you can't really be ratty. You can't rely on the attackers misdroning or having a lack of info unless you're like constantly hitting the crouch walk like down main stairs or something which i mean we might see it's very very probable i would say that someone on two-faced is going to hit a crouch walk flank with no info <laughs> and try and skate around the defense at some point you know maybe it'll be uh well, i would say normally you know if we were casting old honor it'd probably be surf but he's on secondary support now uh maybe maybe eddie maybe butters sounds like a butters thing to do but of course, we'll have to see as Two-Faced start their clear from the small side of things. They're going for ho full horizontal. They likely already have drones upstairs, so they know that's completely clear. They just want to make sure that, well, PB aren't doing the same thing that they were. Yeah, we see no one from PB tucked over in small tower. The nearest player to this clear is going to be Eska, who is going to be holding a pretty typical position on the top of Freezer stairs. His job, just shoot out a couple of drones as they work their way towards him and back off the moment he senses that pressure. And here it is. That pressure is already close around the corner. Eddie just holding down left click with that L LMG, contesting with Kool-Aid, who is just repeatedly swinging with that shotgun. He'll be fine for now to continue to do that because they've got a plethora of intel. Penguin is sitting on this camera, watching exactly where Butters is positioned. So Kool-Aid is going to continue to hold this position very firmly. Oh. Look at these cameras. I mean, they have got wow. so much intel to work with. Penguin really working wonders with these black eye cams, and they're going to know just about everything Two-Faced is doing, and it looks a lot like they're trying to go for this freezer and laundry-sided push. Yeah, this is literally perfect info from PB right now, especially as I'm not quite sure the Iana saw Kool-Aid there, but it's really not going to matter as the hatch gets blown open, prompting the fallback from your two freezer players. But, I mean, like you said, PB are going to know exactly what Two-Faced are doing because of these Valkams. And that's the strength of Valkyrie and why we see her banned so very often. They've still got pings on this guy moving down the freezer stairs because, well, you're typically not really going to be just dropping the hatch in a situation like this. So the info still very good from the side of the defense. Butter is going to burn away the ADS with the Gone 6 follow-up from Nade will not land as those defenders have already evacuated. We're now sub one minute 
Here come the stuns from the Zoe. He's waiting for the call for his team so that the rest of them can start pushing over towards Laundry. There's really no pressure by the E-Box and Tower side of things. And that could, again, you know, talking about the Crouch Walk, that could potentially be where we see it. But it's three attackers. Three getting ready to barrel down Freezer and take this control. But the two hard breachers of Surf and Silent are still hooked over towards Laundry. Surf, I thought actually could probably see the head of Eska, but Eska's just gonna peek out. He's gonna win his first fight and avoid the refrag because Surf didn't see the tip of his head. The C4 will not find the kill, though. It's shot out midair. Beautiful stuff from Kicks to avoid that secondary kill from the Malusi. Another nade goes through, but it only deals chip damage. And on the prone, Eska finds another one looking for a triple. Will not nab it, but all of Surf's teammates are dead. So is he. Parabellum take round seven. Now that was a dominant basement hold from Parabellum, and it was textbook. The amount of intel they had and how they were able to use that to perfection, I mean, that is the kind of setup you just like to see. As far as the two-faced attack goes, they committed to a take very early on, and they stuck with that plan for the remainder of the round. And because Parabellum knew it the entire time what that plan was, it really felt like Two-Face never had a chance. They were feeding Parabellum exactly where Parabellum were expecting it, straight down the freezer stairs, straight down the laundry stairs. And they walked into Parabellum's open arms. A take like that on the freezer and laundry side, I mean, it can be extremely strong. I mean, we've seen how powerful that crossfire is, but it is always helpful if you can jump down there if Parabellum aren't as aware of it as they were that round. Maybe you're applying some pressure to the pillar side as well. You open up that E-Box hatch, which we did see, but that kind of, that kind of spread, that kind of split was completely irrelevant because Parabellum had intel the entire time with those Vault cams. I hate to sound like a broken record with those cameras, but that was just so impactful in the round. And that's why we're going to see Kool-Aid whipping out that Valkyrie once again, because with all that intel they had on that two-face attack, even though Two-Face were able to get a little bit of ground made up into Freezer, clearing out those players initially, forcing Kool-Aid to back off and retreat into the site itself, they simply could not find any edge to get those further kills they needed. And the play from Eska, I mean, that is exactly what you're looking to see from a player like him. Exactly. And I'm not too sure Two-Face found those cams either. So we might see them get used again from PV. And now we're in a dorms defense, and Spirits is in T3 of Tower, a position not often played anymore with the Oregon changes. He even had an, uh, a rotate opened up an attic. I'm not sure if that's still open or if it's been... Nope, okay, so it is still open for a fallback. You've also got Melted holding by his stage from lower support. So this is a pretty, pretty heavy... Well, not heavy... Any, any tower hold is going to be heavier than what we're normally used to seeing because we never see it. But Two-Face are largely just going to be ignoring it. They are not keen on pushing it at all. They are currently completely cornered off towards the east side with some big window pressure as well. So I'm going to be wondering if later we're going to see a big window white split. For now, Butter's just hoping to find a kill through that dorm soft wall. Not going to be able to do so, at least for now. The rest of Two-Faced. They'll bunch up towards this master side, Eddie and Silent. The two players to work their way in from there, while Kix works his way in from below. Maybe has a suspicion as to where Melted is positioned. Ooh, Melted actually will be able to make a quick escape, while Silent actually is the first player to fall. That's a very impactful frag, I do think. What? They were able to get what? some weight a minute. Surf is in the middle of the site. What? He lines up three. He lines up four. It's now all up to Melted. He'll finally get the refrag onto Surf here. But what in the world just happened? He jumped through the main window and found four unassuming defenders. And now the plant's going to go down. Eddie capitalizing on this opportunity that came seemingly out of nowhere. And now it's a post plant for Melted to fight against three. Gonna take a miracle here, especially because of all this intel that it's now Two-Faced have at their fingertips. And Melted has to push against three strong power positions. He'll find the side of Eddie, and a couple of body shots will force to Sophia to recoil and retreat to the corner, but it simply doesn't matter. Eddie will line up the headshot anyway, and a brilliant play from Surf coming out of nowhere, seizing an opportunity to give Two-Faced the round. Yeah, that was... I mean... You know, I wouldn't call that a crouch walk, but... Close. <laughs>
I guess they just, they, they must not have had anything watching that. I mean, you didn't have anyone playing bunks. The guy playing in kids uh, probably wasn't watching the feet holes at that point. Surf just jumped in and nobody knew, especially because your two attic players were stacked up, which is a little bit weird. Um, because Kool-Aid we saw earlier, Kool-Aid was trying to go for the C4 over the wall. And I guess Spirits was just watching the doorway. He was just watching the angle. Eska coming up white as well, as you saw in the replay, was distracted by it looked like Big Window itself, instead of looking at kids where the Maverick was. Um so I you know, I think this is a perfect time for a timeout because that round, a play like that from Surf should never be allowed to happen. Yeah, some some mistakes there from Parabellum and Props to Surf for exploiting those. And yes, I like the timeout here from Parabellum. I think it's as good a time as any. You don't want to wait until you're already on match point because at that point, maybe, maybe the damage has already been done. At this point, though, they still have that one round cushion or technically two round cushion to work with, but they also find themselves down two rounds on the defensive side. They've gone one for one so far. And the Intel game, as much as I emphasized it in the previous round, seems to have seems to have failed them in round number eight. I mean, they had the Valkyrie in play. They still had, theoretically, should have had all that Intel at their fingertips, but Defense Surf found a way to find an opening, to find a blind spot in that network of Intel. And Parabellum were caught off guard in a massive way way so much so that clearly the communication something something was awry there as well i mean surf jumped in and found two kills almost immediately but maybe maybe there was a half second gap between the next kill and a two second gap between the next there was some time for parabellum to get those comms going and it, to at least figure out where surf had come from and how to deal with him because four kills in in two or three seconds that's not just because surf is an incredible player i mean don't get me wrong that was a great play but that's a that's a big mistake from Parabellum that Two-Face was more than happy to jump on and use that advantage to now take two rounds. Yeah, I mean, that was Surf finding a hole and killing four people not looking at him. So, Parabellum are obviously not happy at all with how that round went. What? What? Wow. Okay. I have, I have never seen that before. That was creative. And it'll get a down on a sound. Unfortunately for Jameson Kool-Aid, it will not be a kill. But, I mean, it's it's good damage. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate because I doubt he's going to be able to use that again. And Silent, you know, he's the hard breach. So, not too much of an issue if he's low HP. Yeah, he'll stay in this fight for a bit longer, as will Kool-Aid, who has retreated off of that aggressive forward position and has gone back to the site to now take a brief engagement with surf but he'll back on off both players in fact will back on off and try to get some intel before furthering their push into the building eddie is the first player actually in the building itself as he works his way into master to support silent on low hp who's now attempting to open up that master wall and the rest of parabellum are comfortable to sit back and wait for the time being they are pretty spread out on this map however you've got a couple players looming over on that tower and attic side one of those is eska who's now rotated down to the basement after finding a nice fadeaway kill onto kicks the nomad who we've seen has been kind of a solo player downstairs trying to establish those air jabs trying to establish that airtight perimeter around their flank but unfortunately for kicks it's not going to pay off this round and he will fall and give two-faced a slight disadvantage going into this eventual push yeah, solo pushing like that against PB, uh, while it did work last time for Surf, is not going to work all of the time. Interesting, too, that they dropped the Valkyrie, I guess, figuring, you know, they would rather keep the utility, keep those shields to keep the attackers at bay, rather than info for themselves. And speaking of that utility, the shield goes down, I think, without the Maestro bubble being taken out, which is a little bit weird. Surf is going to Mav the Attic Wall, which is something we almost never see. But Eddie does get a lot of good damage out of the feet of Spirits. Now, the Jaeger, just as lit as that Hibana is, Surf will end up getting one kill, but it comes at the price of two of his teammates. It's Eddie and Butters, completely separated. 
One's on the main breach, one on the big window, in a two versus four against four defenders who have not been touched yet. You've also still got a C4 in the pocket of Eska, and Penguin will now start using his gas canisters, and it's pretty much perfect timing. I mean, he's got one left. That one of the big windows is going to last until 10 seconds. Eddie goes down on the breach with the case. This round is pretty much irrecoverable for Butters, unless he goes absolutely insane. There's one good kill. There's two. Maybe your throw just kind of throwing bodies at him, but now that he's stuck in the barb, it's an easy kill for Eska. Herbel, don't let it get too out of control. Yeah, the timeout proving fruitful for them so far as they immediately come back and they really showcase their patience and their ability to just make sure Two-Faced never has those openings that they've been able to take advantage of so far. Two-Faced definitely were, they, they were searching for those openings. We saw Kicks try to find something downstairs playing on that solo push, but, you know, it was just quickly shut down by Parabellum, and as was every other push that Two-Faced tried to get done. Now, I liked the attempt from Surf to continue the aggression from last round. We saw a couple of different aggressive things from him. First, mapping the attic wall is incredibly risky that's why we don't see it very often because you have to expose yourself to that trophy doorway which can be viewed from all the way back in dorms thankfully they had some intel and the timing worked out for them on that initial uh let's say aggressive move but then the second play from surf was to simply swing the attic door walking straight into a crossfire now he was able to get one kill and support his team as they pushed in from that trophy door but unfortunately he overextended himself just a little bit there was nobody close behind to play the trade from the eventual kids player who killed him and that's kind of where the advantage for two-faced or where the advantage they were trying to fight their way back from was pretty much over at that point so now the advantage has been narrowed just a little bit by parabellum only one round now two-faced are up you see eska just in and around the map drone hunting he's already found two which is actually Actually, pretty good. Um, Parabellum, no, you know, with the way Two Face play, they're very aggressive. So they like their info. An aggressive team with no info is kind of a dumb team. They're just going to be walking right into the crossfires or hold. So PB figure, hey, less drones they have, better is going to be for us. They're going to start clearing from the west side of things from small. Once again, they know that there is nobody on the top floor. You just go ahead and clear in horizontal. I imagine we've still got this Valk cam for Kool-Aid to play off of. I would assume he'll eat a nade to the face, but it really barely does any damage at all. Last time he did waste a pretty significant amount of time and drones here. He's taken out another two. So if Two-Face don't have something else to deal with the smoke, they can be stuck here again. Yes, once again, a Freezer Stairs standoff. Kool-Aid doing what he does best, just sitting here close on this corner and swinging just enough to make two-faced a little bit nervous butters is trying to change that narrative by tossing a frag grenade down but kool-aid had already backed off is joined by eska to support this position because now that this freezer hatch and security has been opened wide you can no longer play as aggressive as they were a moment ago eska will well learn his lesson after he swings a little bit too aggressively and finds about 40 damage taken off his HP, but so far, nobody taken down just yet. Everyone in this fight still, all 10 players eager to find their opening frag as Two-Faced looks to potentially pivot here. After seeing the freezer take and how unsuccessful that went the first time, we're seeing them rotate around a little bit and reposition three attackers over on that north side, the first of which, Silent, is going to be blown sky high by Penguin in a nice nitro cell. I don't even know where that nitro cell was. Did it go, th like, up through E-Box? Because that's where the Havana was before. Uh, yeah. Wow. Holy crap. All right. Good C4, Penguin. One-man advantage for Parabellum. You take out the Havana, but her job is largely done. The Valkyam will be spotted by Surf, so no more free info in meeting the defense. Butter's still solo in Freezer, applying this pressure, making sure that defenders cannot completely ignore that position and focus more body towards the main execute, but... With only 25 seconds left, this could get hairy for this attack. Spirits is just going to peek right up tower and destroy Eddie. Now it's another man advantage for Parabellum, but as Penguin gets taken out, some of that will be alleviated. Eska not able to land all the shots onto Butters, and suddenly the man count turns. What has happened to this defense? It's just Kool-Aid now in a one versus two. People coming from his backside. Surf lands the headshot. How does Two-Faced recover that? 
Gotta say, it looked like Parabellum just lost their wits and got way too aggressive. I mean, it was the swing from Laundry that really revealed that to me. It was Butters tucked close in the freezer after just getting one kill on a long angle through the long haul into Pillar, right? That was a great kill. And there's really no reason. I'm not sure who it was. Might have been Eska on the Malusi sitting yes. in sitting in Laundry itself. He went for a wide swing and just got absolutely slammed. That was one mistake. And it seemed at that exact moment, everyone else from Parabellum died at the same time. I don't know if that was a coordinated execute from Two-Faced because it looked like they were still unable to get into the site. Parabellum had done a great job up to that point of actually holding them at bay. And all of a sudden, it just completely turned around. I, w I, I was thinking that Parabellum really had this basement on lock. They had forced Two-Faced to rotate from one failed attack to what looked like it would be another failed attack. It was a 5v3 after all, with Parabellum in the advantage, and, and Two-Face find a miracle. I mean, props to them, but I have no idea how they pulled that off. I don't know either. That was definitely Parabellum dropping the ball and Two-Faced barreling in, not letting up the pressure. So good job to them. I mean, you know, if there's one thing Two-Face can do, one thing that all five of these players can do that we have seen time and time again, well, it's win their fights. Surf is 12-7 and seven right now. Butters 10-7, and seven, the two most experienced members of this squad, of course, leading the pack. Parabellum are going to attempt basement once again. Pretty much the exact same lineup. Hoping that they'll be able to find some success. But the attackers are just going to start... Blindly just rushing in. Melton gets an easy one onto Butters. They also try to just walk into Attic. That doesn't okay. work. Everybody pushing Bunker side dies. And the round is over. Jeez. Okie dokie. Parabellum with the flawless round. I'm not sure what Two Faced were doing. Other than, I don't know, trying to win in the most. Other than dying? Demoralize, demoralizing way possible for Parabellum, but yeah, that 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 failed. They they all just died. All right. Interesting. Looking at the last flawless round from Parabellum of round round number three, that was on a meeting attack. Thankfully for Two Faced, at least you can look back at that and say it's not like it gave Parabellum a ton of momentum. Two Faced was able to take the round immediately following, but that's still a bit of a concern. Because something we never even got to talk about, because Two-Face were busy throwing their lives away, was, was the advantage and match point that Two-Face secured. It was 6-4 to four match point. It still is match point, but it is 6-5, to five and Parabellum are only one round away from heading into OT. And Two-Face, if, if they're being smart about this, they do not want to go to overtime. They, they have clearly proven their mettle. They have clearly proven that they may, in fact, be the better team right now. But they still have a long way to go. They still have to figure out a way to take round number 12. And if not, figure out a way to close out in OT. Because uh, if that last round is any indicator, things uh, may not be looking up for them. I was interested as to why PB have not brought out one of the tertiary sites. It makes me think maybe especially against the way Two-Faced play. If they're uncomfortable on their third site. Also, Spirits saw that drone. Like, that's not just me, right? Like, Spirits saw that drone. And shoot it. So they they know he's in T3 now, or at least somewhere in tower. Uh, my main concern for this round for Two-Faced is that they are 1-1 one one on this site. They lost the second try of Dorms pretty substantially. And the only reason why they won the first attempt is because Zerv vaulted into Big Window and got a 4k. And the only reason why that happened is because Smoke, instead of holding the footholds and stopping that, was on cams. So I don't have full faith in this attack from Two-Face just yet. If Parabellum, you know, again, continue playing like we know how Parabellum can, and they play this Dorm's defense like on the round they won, this could be OT. And guess who starts defense in OT? Is Parabellum? <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, Two-Face should probably want to win this one out here then. They'll begin by pressuring rather early into Master and Trophy. They'll get a couple of those 
Vulcan shields dealt with. The main one staring at the trophy door has been taken care of. So that's a good bit of progress considering we're not even 90 seconds into the round. They've got the master wall open. Silent is now holding that angle. And now he'll actually be shut down right at the onset of that peak. Kool-Aid and the Alda in hand will go for that wide swing and that will net him the kill. And now Eddie will take up the mantle of this position while another one of his teammates falls beside him. That's Butters, the next player to find his grave. And now that is going to leave two players left from Two-Faced. And they are now quite disjointed. Surf is now hoping to join up with Kicks and make something happen from this Attic side. But this push from Attic usually only works if you're getting this double-pronged push going. That's what Eddie is now left to do all by his lonesome because both Butters and Silent, who were initially on that master side, have died before him. I guess the one solace for the attack right now is that they did, I think, get Attic open, if I'm not mistaken, and Kool-Aid is pretty low on HP. A big power position that might come into play is where Melted is currently sitting. As long as this Jaeger keeps distracting, the Malusi might be unknown, just tucked right into this corner, but it looks like it's not even going to matter. Spirits gets the solo attic pusher as Kix had since departed from his teammate, strangely enough. And Spirits wow. is going to get a second beautiful shot onto Eddie. It's just Kix left pushing attic. He'll find one on the Spirits, but not the second. Melted shuts him down. It's a flawless round from PB to send us to overtime. OT it is. Parabellum have made the comeback. They take that timeout and they bounced back pretty strong. Of course, Two Face were able to take one round since then, but Parabellum and the three rounds, that is definitely a pretty strong message to send here. But it is now overtime, and like you said, Harrison, Parabellum will be starting on the defensive side. And this is where, of course, they've found the most success. It has been 4-2 to two on the defensive side on both of these halves for both of these teams. So if the pattern continues, we know what outcome to expect. But I think this, uh, this map has proven that I don't think we can expect the expected. We've got... We've got an interesting one on our hands, and we're going to have to get a quick technical timeout while they make sure these operators can be selected, because it is OT after all, and you really want to make sure you get this one right. Also, we also really want to avoid rehosting. I don't want that, especially in OT. I hate, I hate rehosting before OT. It really makes me upset. It looks like Melted is just, um, really can't choose, uh, can't choose his op, so hopefully, hopefully that's fixed soon. Um... Something else, Jonah, that hasn't happened yet. Two-Faced haven't taken their time out. Now, of course, That's true. this is going to kind of serve as a little bit of a, a, a timeout for the players to talk among themselves. Um, now that I think about it, I do Two-Faced have support staff? Do they have a coach or an analyst? I'm not entirely sure. I don't... Hopefully, you know what? Somebody in chat will call us, will call us idiots for not knowing. Yeah. I... Personally, I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't think they do. So maybe that's why they figure they don't really need the tack timeout because they don't have a coach to talk to. But uh, it's a little bit weird. Maybe if they lose this round, right? Maybe if they lose this round, they'll try and take the timeout and stem the, uh, stem the momentum. Because if they lose this round, it'll be three in a row from Parabellum, the longest streak that we've seen in this game so far as it's been fairly back and forth. And Jonah, first round of OT... We have a clash. Yeah, this one, this one's going to be interesting, right? Because we're, we're in basement, and so if you're seeing a clash on Oregon, this is generally the site you can expect. More often than not, the role of a clash is going to be to sit at that blue door and hold down that construction push that generally comes in from the attacking team. But I don't know how I feel about this decision because we haven't seen that push from Two-Face yet. Of course, in the round they threw away almost instantaneously. Yes, they full sent it through Bunker. But every other time, and when they found a bit more success, they are doing what we can see right now. They worked their way in from the west, they cleared through Small Tower, and they worked their way up into Freezer. Here's something interesting, though. Penguin is not holding down blue right now. He's sitting right in the middle of this hallway, just staring Butters Ooh. in the face. Actually, turned out that that was his he... Gemini clone, so I don't think that was too big of a deal. But Eska, who was sitting behind him, got torn to shreds in the meantime. He's been now taken down about 30 HP. He's backed off, and that's going to force Penguin to 
play a bit more carefully here without that support from behind. I'm actually really surprised Penguin is able to get down Freezer considering Kix was holding Z and could have easily shot him in the back. Nade will go through, but because Penguin has a shield in front of him, it won't kill him, though it does deal a pretty damn significant amount of damage. So I guess instead of the Valcams, this is their source of info on the Freezer stairs. Another nade goes out. It will not do really any significant damage again. And this clash will continue harassing Butters. And, I mean, you know, they have Eddie on the Zoe. They maybe have an air jab they can use. But other than that, Penguin might be pretty difficult to deal with. So they've got the security hatch open, which has now forced Penguin to back on off all the way at least to that freezer door kool-aid's backed off eska's backed off so two Face have made the progress they need to at least alleviate the amount of pressure that parabellum were applying on that freezer stairs position but this has come later in the round than we've seen it any time previously so two Face are now going to be fighting essentially from a disadvantage compared to their standing in any previous round at this point, they're now under 60 seconds to go, still five players to deal with on this site, and Two-Faced are once again a bit all over the place on this attack. C4 goes out from Eska, Butters will take a good bit of a hit there, but not enough to take him all the way down, but enough to dissuade Two-Faced from taking Freezer anymore. They've now fully rotated over to this E-Box hatch, fully rotated to this north side, and this push is going to hinge on how well they can frag out here. It will start off in a positive note for them as Kix gets that opening blow onto Spirits, and now they place themselves in the advantage, but time is not on their side. They need to get going. They haven't dropped E-Box either. They haven't been able to open the hole, at least not yet. And there's the hole is meant to clear the player barrels, but there's no one there. The Clash still in play as well can call out perfect info. Penguin will end up just pulling out the gun, curiously enough, as this player just barreling in from everywhere. Eddie what? will try to breach and charge the softball, completely fail, even though he gets the kill. Surf with another before Eska trades. The plant is going down, it's a 1v4 for Eska, and he's stopped in his tracks by Silent. Two-Face, take round 13, despite low time, despite the gas canister, despite their breaching not work, they still do what they do best, they win all of their fights. What a mess, oh my lord. <laughs> that was, that was a wild execute. Um... It, it really looked like it was going to culminate in an absolute disaster. But uh, Two-Face, that is, that is several rounds now. That's got to be at least three rounds where it's looked like an unwinnable situation and they turn it into a winnable one. And uh, to do so on a round like this where it looked like they were all over the place, not even on their execute, but everywhere? I mean, that is very impressive. It's going to force Parabellum into attacking now in OT. It's going to force them to really pull out the creativity. We'll see the Ying come out from Spirits. But if Parabellum can't win that round, I, I don't know if they can win this one either. Two-Faced are sh proving their medal now round after round. And I got to say, it doesn't necessarily look the prettiest, but they are getting the job done. And they're doing it against what we thought would be the strongest team coming into this matchup and to potentially the entire stage. All they need is one more round and they will take this win. Two-Face just gotta put something together on this top floor defense. They've found success here before. In fact, they've gone flawless on this site. Both times they defended it, they were able to win. Yeah, PB losing that first defensive round is a massive blow. That cannot be understated especially with the way the sites have been working out so far. Like you said, Two-Faced, they love this site. Silent is... Uh, wait, let me wait on that. Okay, all right. Silent is going to be unable to get an early pick over towards Master. Luckily enough for, uh, for Parabellum, they're not going to be crippled early. They're also bringing a Ying. This is a big change. They no longer have the Iana of Spirits, no longer have that info, the Gone Six, the Nades, they have the Candelas and Smokes. And what does that tell you about a dorms push? It means they're probably going big window white. Now, they sixth picked to it, of course, so Two-Faced were unaware of that at least before the round started. They might be aware of the Ying now if she's, you know, fired a couple of shots because that LMG is a, has a pretty uh, distinct sound, I would say. And now with Parabellum clearing below, Two-Faced should uh, wise up to the, the shenanigans that Parabellum are trying to pull. But, I mean, they are putting a lot of faith on this Ying right now because if this doesn't work out... 
Two Faced are going to take one over the champs. We'll see how Parabellum remedies some of their earlier attacking mistakes. So their drone work has definitely tidied up once they've realized exactly the kind of style of play that Two Faced is bringing to the table here. So they're not going to fall victim to any more, we called it Rat Roam earlier. And I think. That's so far the case. Oh my god, Eddie just missed a very easy opportunity there. His penguin was caught with his pants down, just sitting at the bottom of the stairs. But Eddie is, in fact, the player to fall in that exchange. Spirits, holding that big window position now for a full minute, will finally be rewarded by, with his patience. He'll take down Eddie and give Parabellum the advantage now, forcing probably a bit more aggressive from a player like Kix. And now Butters, who is going to go for this wide Ooh. rotation and this flank. He won't be able to save his teammate in time from a perfectly cooked nade from Kool-Aid landing right at the Kaid's toes. Ooh. Silent will answer. A great shot fell, found in response right onto the head of Spirits. Those two faced are working their way back into this fight. The Parabellum, they are getting ready to make this push. And they still have ample time to do it. Gotta worry about Surf with these gas canisters, though. If anyone tries to vault in through Big Window, I mean, Spirits isn't there, but if someone else decides to take up that mantle... They're going to have to go through him as Silent and Butters are still over towards the east side of the map. They're a little bit separated from this smoke. If the smoke dies here, that could be huge. But Kool-Aid, he's got no idea Butters is here. He's hitting the crouch walk. He's watching Trophy. That's a freebie for the Goyo. There's the equalizer. Silent, he rolls the man count under the favor of the defense. It's all on Melton and Penguin. The IGL and the new pickup. Penguin gets severely lit up. He's dead. It's just Melton. He'll take out one. He's got the LMG in hand, but barely any HP. He's got to pick up the case. There might be info on him as well. There's only three seconds. This match is effectively over. Two-faced. The new blood to CL win their first game over the previous stage champs. 8-6.